Okay, go. Yeah. Cool. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another New Generation webinar. We're actually on number nine now, and today's subject is going to be conquering resistance with persistence. So um, we've got a few people on the panel today, uh, only a small group. We've got, uh, we'll go from right to left, which is the lovely Amy Taylor. Hello. I'm still just trying to work out to Andrew's invitation out so he can join us. Hi, sorry, trying to do too many things at once. It's, uh, are we, can we all hear each other? Yeah, I can hear a lot of you. Cool. Yeah. I'm just going to um, turn my screen around because I've just realised I've got a bath towel hanging on my door, which is really attractive. Um, <laughs> Hello, Amy Taylor, mywifebylife.com. Um, welcome, thanks for joining us. Uh, looking forward to this one and hearing all about the book that I know has a massive impact on UJ. Um, and yeah, just talking about persisting, which is a pretty relevant topic for two of us at the moment, I think, for different reasons. So it'll be a good one. Awesome. Well, we look forward to uh, hearing how your day's gone <laughs> um, in just a minute. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got uh, Jay Lawler. Hi, Jay. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm Jade Lawler, and you can find me at lesleyandjadelawler.com. And yeah, really looking forward to today and how different people overcome different challenges and um, continue to have continue the persistence to have persistence. <laughs> the um it's quite funny that we've got this group of people still on this webinar today just to, because I remember when Jade started and I remember she started around the same time as us, you, yourself and your mum and then Amy, I think we got chatting pretty early on didn't we? Yeah. And we were discussing all the problems that we were having all along the way so um, being persistent has definitely started to pay off for everybody who sat on this panel I think especially yeah. Amy today. Tell everyone how your day has gone, Amy. Oh, it was pretty cool. It was a bit surreal. Um, I woke up this morning to an email telling me that I'd made 8,000 US dollars, which was more than I've ever made in my life in a day, let alone... It equates currently to about two months' worth of my salary, so it was pretty cool. Um, and it's... It is it's funny because persistence is such a relevant topic because whenever I've had any results, I know that a day before, a week before, I've been really low or really frustrated with something or other um, to do with understanding a new strategy or just, you know, stumbling blocks that we all hit and they can be really silly ones. But I had a holiday two weeks ago and last week I was really struggling to get back into my routine and my rhythm having done the 30 day challenge the month before I went away um, and was just like oh god I feel like I'm back to square one and then you have a day like day so it's just testament to never giving up for sure. Definitely, um, definitely a roller coaster, isn't it? Oh 100%. And, and I think um, <laughs> I think we've all probably gone through so many things and a lot of people think that this is going to be easy when they come into it and I'll be the first to admit I thought oh this this seems pretty simple and I never ever thought I'd have to go through what I've had to go through so far to get where I am today. I, I often hear people say if people told others what they had to go through when they were first starting out they wouldn't even start. They'd just be like, fuck that. I'm not even doing that. No. And it's just ridiculous, um, the ups and downs and how you have to keep motivating yourself to uh, persist with your dream. And a lot of people give up on their dreams. Look at Andrew's picture. <laughs> what is this? That? What's he done? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we haven't got any audio for Andrew, so he's not very happy. He's just going to smile and I we might try and limp. Has it been out and come back? Or not, has that not worked? Just write in the chat box, Andrew. <laughs> you know, absolutely right, Jay. Um, I think it, 
without digressing, it, it, it totally comes down to your why and just keeping your vision. Like the minute you feel overwhelmed or confused or frustrated, you've just got to go back to why you're doing it, which mine is behind me. <laughs> this is my very sexy glass board that I told you I was buying. <laughs> on the wall and covered. Very sexy, very expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive, but it's paid off. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and Jade, um, I know you and your mum were slowly but surely plucking away, and you were getting a bit frustrated with your, your day to day job. And your mum was looking after a dad, a whole host of different things were going on in the background with you. Um, yeah. You persisted, and um, that started to pay off recently, isn't it? It has, yeah. And I do still find it challenging um, working a 60 hour week which is a very demanding job um, which probably like the people listening or new people coming into this are going to be going through um, but it is still, it is still possible. Um, I work different hours, different shifts, um, starting at 12 in the afternoon, finishing at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, it is completely random every week. It doesn't stay the same, so it's hard to. It was challenging to get into being able to six to seven time, which now I have to. I did find it challenging. I am overcoming that and trying to get more persistent. Um, at the start of the week when I've got my shifts, set out when I'm free and what time I've got to do what. Um, and it is workable. It is possible to have persistence and have a full-time job, full and a half-time job. <laughs> so, so anybody watching who's actually moaning, oh, I've got a job to do and I work a nine to five and oh, I'll be so tired afterwards. I've heard Amy say stuff like this. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not tired. <laughs> there is no excuse. And I'm, I'm, very sim I'm not very similar because I don't work that many hours, but basically I work with my dad sometimes in the day at the minute and... The great thing about doing another job is that by the time you get to come in home, you're like a coiled spring, and you're never tired because you hate what you're doing throughout the day, unless you're Amy, she loves her job. <laughs> and then you get home and you're like, let's go, let, let's just spring into this. And this is what actually brings us on to this book that I've been so fascinated with uh, recently, I actually listened to the audio tape and it's uh, Rhinoceros, <laughs> I'd never pronounce it, <laughs> Rhinoceros Success. And Is it a tape, Jay? Is it 1980? <laughs> you can get it as a book or a... Audio book. Or an audio book and I got it on the audio book because you get the enthusiasm of the author. Uh, Scott Alexander, and it, it is funny, it's a funny book, but it's also relevant in everything we do. And so um, I'll start off um, to look at the, the first part of it, which is actually, um, I think it's the art of charging, it's called. So this concept behind charging is that um, you have uh, what they call cows, which are people who, cows and sheep who are just in the meadow grazing, waiting to be slaughtered, so to speak. So that could be someone working there nine to five, getting sick of what they're doing, they're moaning about it, they don't like it, but they're still doing it regardless. And um, they're the cows who never want to go anywhere in life, they just plod on and just basically wait to be slaughtered, like I said. And then you have uh, the rhino. So the rhino, if you're a rhino, it doesn't matter whether you're in your own business or you're in uh, the corporate world or in your normal job. Um, rhinos actually, they're so persistent, they don't let anything get in their way. Um, and they call them torpedoes. So, um, you know, people try and stand in your way. People like your family and that hold you back. You don't let any of that hold you back because you have two inch thick skin and the author's talking about 
you're a rhino, charge, 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 and it's so funny to listen to. And this this art of charging, he talks about. You don't get out of bed in the morning like a lazy sloth or someone who doesn't want to get up and, and enjoy their day and go out on an adventure. You want to get up like a rhino. Get up like a rhino. Get up early. Be ready for your day. Get excited. Get passionate about what you do. Don't go to work because no one wants to work. Work is not enjoyable, but being a rhino is enjoyable because you're charging toward your goals. And so he talks about goals and every day set your goals. Oh, only set one goal that you want to achieve in the day, your week, your year, whatever it might be. And don't just get out of bed and like a sloth and go, yeah, I'll do a bit of this, do a bit of that. Get out of bed and go, I'm a rhino, let's go, let's go towards our goals. And charge. <laughs> I didn't catch that, What you're a what? <laughs> so you need to get pictures, Amy, of rhinos. You need to get pictures of rhinos charging. <laughs> so you need to get pictures of rhinos charging. And you okay. need to put them in your bathroom. And you need to put them uh, at the end of your bed. Replace your partner. They're not important. It's the rhino that's important. Charging rhino. All right, we're all single. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, this this charging thing. I mean, it kind of moves us on to to. Um, Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of moves on to uh, goals and um, why you're getting out of bed in the morning. Something you mentioned there, Amy, was uh, your why. And the reason you're so persistent is because you have a big enough why, yeah. which is on your board behind you. Yeah. And so um, I know for us recently, um, we've been having lots of issues with Facebook and um, through listening to this book and, and thinking about my why and thinking about uh, the persistence element side of thing, just like plowed through Facebook and managed to get all our ads approved and sorted, which has actually taken me two months, but I don't know why. Um, and I don't know whether any of you have experienced any problems like that and had to call on your why to actually pick you up and get you out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, Not right, Jade? No, I, I, um, I definitely don't want to get up at nine o'clock in the morning when I've finished work at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but I make myself because that's the time that I have to, to persist with my business. And yeah, I definitely. Have to remind myself why, why I'm doing it. Yeah, it's, um, they say that if you can get out of bed in the morning, it doesn't matter whether you're feeling like shit or what, and you get up with enthusiasm and excitement, then you've actually found your true destiny, the yeah. thing you love. Um, I mean, it could clash with the why. People do it for different reasons, but it's different for me because I do it because I love it. Um, so you might love it. I don't know whether you love it, <laughs> um, but I certainly love what I do. Um, something simple as clicking um, the toggle on the Facebook thing. I love all that sort of stuff. It's a bit geeky. <laughs> it's activating an ad, which can only mean one thing, that it increases my chances of making a sale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I find it quite exciting, sales. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I think... I'm quite lucky, like you said, I, I do love my job. It's only in the last three months I've moved into a department or into an office where within the company I was already in, I really, we're thriving as a team. And I think that does help in the sense that we do a lot of mindset stuff or I do a lot of mindset stuff with the team. Um, we, uh, I will be doing a video this week actually on, um, we call it our badge. Um, it's our, our vision and goal. Say that again. <laughs> we work on our badge every day. I thought you said your vag. I was going to say. say vag. I, that's exactly what I said. Your vag. Yeah, which stands for vision and goals. <laughs> <laughs> as if I could never take you seriously as a team leader saying that. I'm not a team leader, but my team leader is even worse than me. 
But, um, so today I'm going to talk about my vag and what yeah. it's going to do for me. Yeah, you, need, you need to ask yourself every day if your vag is big enough, basically. <laughs> 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 um, which is something that is, it goes back to the why. Um, it's really awesome that I get to go into a, a job every day where everyone is as focused and set on goals as you need to be in your own business. And sales essentially is a bit like that if you're in a sales job because um, you are working for yourself to an extent. Um, and we've got this big why for us as a team at work is getting to Las Vegas next year. We've got company awards that we really want to qualify for. Um, so it is something that I, I really want to get this book and read it and then be recommending it in our next meeting. But I've totally hit frustrations with this business and not understanding something, feeling overwhelmed, knowing what to focus on. Um, and it's only really, I'm coming up to nine months doing this now, and it's only in the last couple of months that I've realized the simple stuff that, that you should focus on. Um, and you get times where there's so much in front of you that you just don't know where to go. And that's it's just so easy to throw the towel in and hope that the amount, you, whatever you've done so far, is going to pay off. And it does. Every bit that you've done before will pay off. It's a cumulative thing of experience and knowledge and everything. But you do, you do need to have a really, it's what Stuart is always saying, It's a, you've got to have a clear vision of, of where you're going and why you're doing it because that is your default when you get to those points. And you just walk away, have a break re-visualize, reset, and, and it really does work. <clears throat> it's so important. Yeah, like, you have to focus on um, the things that are important uh, and, and your why, like you said. Um, a lot of people jump from uh, one thing to the next. <laughs> I mean, we've been guilty of doing it as well. Yeah. And actually, it talks about, in the book, it talks about how um, a, a magnifying glass won't ignite a flame if it isn't concentrated on one particular spot for a long enough period of time. But when you concentrate it on a spot for a period of time, it ignites the fire and you continue to concentrate on that spot so you remain laser focused, then you'll ignite a blaze. And hopefully that's the start of what's happening to you, Amy. <laughs> Hope so. Well, just pick up the momentum. I think once you get the momentum, it becomes a lot easier. Well, that's the thing, and it is keeping momentum, which is, again, persistence. And I had broken my momentum to an extent by having a holiday, albeit I had set certain a few things up um, in advance of my holiday with, you know, AWeber and, and scheduled emails. And I did do a bit of work whilst I was away, and it wasn't a chore at all because I love it. But um, it is keeping that momentum, and I think, for me, I, I've been really aware of that today, like as, as euphoric as it was to realize that I've made that money, I really need to channel it sensibly now and reinvest it and, and keep that momentum going because there would be no point in not reinvesting it straight away and what I know is working. If I took a month off now and didn't do anything, all, all that momentum is lost. You disconnect from your list, you disconnect from your followers, you've got to keep it going and you've got to keep persisting. Um, so I'm, I'm more aware of it now than I ever was really. Just one, one thing I want to ask you both actually. Um, obviously to maintain persistence and motivation you need to believe in yourself and I think um, enthusiasm and motivation comes part of believing in yourself. I mean what did it take for both of you to start believing you could do this? Uh, was it money? Was it something that happened? Um, Jade? Um, I can't really explain it. I, I suppose it's from reading, reading certain books, figuring out how your brain works and how... and, and seeing other people's results. It's like I believe I believe in the system and I believe it works, but occasionally I have that dip of believing in myself to do it. So that's it's something that people are gonna gonna overcome. You go through a period of time where you have no results, or a period of time where you lose momentum a little bit more, and you you start losing the belief. They but, say that momentum, uh, you lose momentum because you lose belief. That's uh, one of the things they mention in the book as well. Um, and I think to overcome that, I, it's mind over matter for me. 
yes, my my gut instinct might be saying at one stage that no, can you really do this? Is this really possible? But I'm quite I'm headstrong, so I talk myself out of it. I I'll then work on myself a little bit more around that stage. Um, and that's going to come at different stages between through people's lives. Um, belief in something that is so big that you once would never believe could happen to you. Um, it's a lot. I've got to say, it's a lot easier now. But I still go through stages. If I've if I've been at work for two days, which is basically for 24 hours, <clears throat> um, then and I haven't really done much towards the business. I lose a little bit of belief in myself because I haven't I haven't taken any action. I haven't I haven't been persistent. Um, and I have to then force myself back into that mindset of you can do this. You've already done it. You just have to believe in yourself. Self affirmations. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely, you definitely got to keep working on yeah. yourself. Yeah. And um. I was talking to Chris about this the other day about, um, you know, if you're not in the right mindset and you're feeling like shit for whatever reason it might be in your life, then you're going to produce a shit result. So if you're not feeling particularly great about not doing work or whatever it might be, then you're not going to get the desired outcome. And I'm a firm believer, and I'm sure Jay Kubsek actually always says this and loads of other people, that the result you're getting now is just what you deserve, nothing else, and it's the direct result of the action you take. Yeah. So. But there is one good thing that comes with this business. You are taught from the beginning to read these certain books to be aware that you can gain control of the mind chatter that goes on in your head. The monkey brain, it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a book called The Chimp Paradox. I don't know whether any of you have read it. Yeah. And it talks about uh, the monkey brain. So, like, um, your brain is split up into three parts, and you've got the chimp, which is ten times faster than the human, and then you've got the human part of the brain and the computer. And say, for instance, someone um, pulls in front of you when you're in the road and you go fuck off like that, or whatever you might do and um, that's your chimp reaction it's just emotion um, that's what we the chimp is based on that's why we buy things when we're feeling excited or whatever it is then when they pull in front of you the actual um, computer goes um, what did I do last time what do I do what do I do what did I do last time look at my memory see what how I behaved and the yeah. human actually goes, am I safe? I'm safe, I'm safe, it's alright, I'm still alive. And it's all about how um, how to control your inner chimp in you. And yeah. um, this all ties in with um, your mindset and, and how you deal with things. So you can learn to control your chimp and then go, actually, I've let that emotion pass, I'm actually okay. This is fine, I can do this, I, can, I, I believe in myself and all that good stuff. I probably went off on a bit of a tangent then, but hey yeah. <laughs> It all comes together. You have to have the right mindset to be persistent, to believe in yourself, to to move forward. You still have to... I'm reading um, Stuart Lichman's meta story at the moment, and I'm mesmerized by it, really, because there's so much that goes on in your brain, and it teaches you how it all works. And... It all moves forward to believing in yourself to create the future you want. I think what a lot of people don't get as well is that um, believing in yourself is not something that just happens. Like people have said to me, oh, you know, but you're a really confident person. It's like, yeah, but that's something I've worked on. That is something I've gone and learned. It's not, I am quite naturally an extrovert. It's not like I'm an introverted person, but you don't have to be an extrovert to be confident and believe in yourself. And I think a lot of people don't, don't, just don't understand that that is something that you work on. It's something that you constantly work on. Like your mindset is programmed by your brain, and your brain is a muscle, and it's no different to stopping going to the gym for a while. It, it will stop working. It will stop being as functional and as strong and efficient if you don't keep fine-tuning it. It can always be stronger. And I 
haven't done anywhere near as much work recently on it as I should because I've got wrapped up in the technical side of things and I'm going to put myself back through the blueprint like a lot of people are at the moment because your mindset again is is your why it all comes down to that you can learn everything else you, you, you need to learn the mindset stuff if you're not naturally inclined that way but as much as you need to learn how to advertise on Facebook you need to learn how to channel everything else because it's all it's all it's all going to fall down if one is not in if, if one is not strong enough Definitely. There's, um, there's a part of the book where he talks about it's all right having a positive mindset positive this positive that and feeding loads of positivity in your life but you've got to take action based on that positivity hmm. and he talks about um, what the hell do you talk about I don't know what he talks about <laughs> 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 Um, and he's just basically talking about um, that your mind. What's he called? Self um, self discipline. Yeah. So you've got to be able to discipline your mind and discipline yourself to be able to, um, you know, like you say, educate yourself and work on your brain so that you can be positive and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of notes here, but I can't. I'm scrolling through. Conscious not... stuff as well. I think you can. Um... I haven't done the meta stories properly. It's and I'm quite happy to admit that, but it's so important. I, I probably concentrate on that kind of stuff more at work than I do in my own business, and it it works. It really does work. Um, writing stuff down is huge. Having something visual is huge. I've gone out and bought for our whole team. I went out and bought um, three hundred thousand dollars worth of casino chips. Because that's our. We need to make three hundred pounds, three hundred thousand pounds worth of profit in our business this year to make it to Vegas. So we've got like a counter, and I'm counting the Vegas chips up, and everyone thinks I'm mental. <laughs> it works. That's and I've got, them, I've got them like all around my screen, all around my monitor, so that they are permanently in front of my face. My figure is my my figures are permanently in front of my face. Um, wow, so I'm starting to do the same thing here now. It's just not quite as colourful. I know what it was now. Um, he said, "Don't turn on the television and don't listen to negative stories about people who are getting stabbed or this and everything else, because it'll because it'll dampen your enthusiasm. Let the cows fill their lives with negative stories. Don't ignore it, but um, don't saturate your, saturate your life with it. So yeah. life is life; it must go on. But he's basically saying." Um, don't don't obviously cram your life with Big Brother and Coronation Street and all that sort of stuff. That's actually going to bring watch that. news for exactly that reason. It's like that's half an hour of my life that's going to be spent feeling quite morbid. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. I yeah. don't anymore. I um, if my granddad's got it on, then yeah, I'll glance, but I'm usually on the computer. I have no interest unless it's a certain program. Darren Brown's on tonight, so uh, yeah. If it's entertaining and it's escapism and it helps you relax, that's different. My um, friend was staying with me for the last three weeks. She's actually my boss, and she was watching Made in Chelsea, New York, and um, she called me in. I was like, "Oh, what's this? Some sort of rom com?" Because it was shot in like this soft focus, terrible. Oh, it's so awful. And she was like, no, it's made in Chelsea, New York. I got through about 10 minutes, and I was just twitching. I was so angry that I was spending my time watching it. She's like, Amy, not everyone needs to be watching something that educates them. It's just a way of switching off. I was like, you've justified that very well. Good for you. I'm going to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's not escapism anymore. It used to be. But now escapism would be, I don't know, hanging out with you guys. or <laughs> Bungie <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, something really extreme. Yeah, it's um it's amazing how you probably every, everything you do, I mean, it does say this in the book as well, and it talks about if you're gonna read a book or watch a program or do whatever you're gonna do, ask yourself before you even do it, I think this goes to everything in this business, um, is it going to help you to reach your goals? So um we made the mistake of pissing about on social media trying to keep a social presence on all this sort of stuff, everything, and then we ask ourselves, is that going to help us reach our goals? No, driving traffic is going to help us reach our goals and building relationships through email or LinkedIn as it is now we're trying. Um, 
and you've just got to constantly be looking at your time. He actually says in the book, the best way to manage your time is imagine that every single minute is worth $10. So you will lose $10 for every minute you waste, right? You can buy, you can buy, you can make more money, but you can't make more time. You have 24 hours in a day to actually work on yourself and work on your business. It's a good way of thinking about it if you thought of losing $10. It's that video that went around on YouTube and Facebook recently, the guy that he actually put the wrong total <laughs> for the number of seconds in a day and he said I lose this many dollars a day and then every day that amount gets put back in my bank by the end of the day I'm broke. Like, yeah, I see that, yeah. Uh, and it's true, you can't buy more time and for me personally it was a, a family bereavement and that realisation of not being able to create more time that kind of got me started in this and that's a big thing to what I go back for. It's like, you know, you move on and you get over things but I always imagine my uncle standing behind me like, what are you doing? Like, make the most of it, make the most of it, make the most of it. Um, and that's a huge thing for me. Just being happy, even if it's just being, not being miserable and not being negative. Like you say, you just, you, you, that five minutes that you're going to sit and feel sorry for yourself or that five minutes that you're going to bitch and moan about something, you don't get that five minutes back and that's five minutes that you could be put into a far more proactive, positive usage. It makes it sound like there's uh, plugs in this, Amy, because everything you and Jade come out with, it's actually a title or something in the book, in, like you touch on particular <laughs> subjects. The oh, really? next subject was how to be the world's happy, happy, the world's most happy rhinoceros. I have rhinoceros. <laughs> the world's happiest people can also be a bit annoying. I'm well aware of that. You don't have to go around smiling and laughing all day long every day. But what are you trying to say? Like, <laughs> you know, all that. Right. I've seen you cry. Um, yeah. But but whether you know you're allowed to be sad. You're a human being. But like you say, you've got to think about. The, just making the best of every single circumstance, and yes, you're gonna you're gonna be sad at times, and things are gonna happen to you that are horrible. But it's coming through them, overcoming them, and back to the same subject: persisting with your goals, with your life. You know, don't give up on anything. Time, life's too short. There's always something else you could be doing that you will get to, and that you will make the most of. But it's up to no one else is responsible for for pushing through every every challenge than you. Yeah. I think a big thing to touch on, sorry, that I was going to touch on before with um, how have you overcome the challenges. A, a massive, without doubt, a massive part for me has been the community and just sur the importance of surrounding yourself with like-minded people. And for me, again, it goes back to my job. I'm surrounded by a fantastic team of people that are all equally driven as me and we all, we've all got a common goal. And I think that's a really similar thing with the SFM community. Like I, that I'm sure all of us have been through times. I know you have, Jay. I certainly have. Where Stand yourself with rhinos, as he says, right? Oh, yeah, of course. When, when right. you read this book, right, watch this webinar back and you'll be like, oh my <laughs> God. And everything Stuart and everybody teaches us about circle of influence, um, feeding your mind, you know, all that good stuff, everything's in this book. And um, if you go through and you circle the bits that you're actually doing and circle the bits you're not, then you'll soon see where you need to improve. But it's so it's so spot on, this book, with what the SFM actually teaches us um, yeah. and, and what Jay preaches and Stuart preaches. It's absolutely unreal. But what you talk about in the community, um, so obviously you talked about how I was going through a bit of a hard time and for some reason... Um, I let my family hold me back and I made a decision on it and it made me quite upset which is uh, very unusual for me because I like to fill my life with happiness and love life. Um, I, I, people always ask me why are you so happy? I say because I'm high on life and my dad's um, my dad thinks I'm a bit crazy because <laughs> I'm just laughing it, like a bad situation to me, I just laugh and I'm like, <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? What's the big deal? Like, if, yeah. if I die, if I die tomorrow, is it going to affect my life? No, because dying is, Stuart always says that the only way, uh, Stuart or Guy or Elan says, the only time they're going to worry about it is if they're dead and then they won't need to worry about it because they won't know anything about it. That's, yeah, that's, I think that's Stuart said that was his exit strategy. 
Exit strategy, yeah, that's it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> what do you say? Oh, she said, well, I think it was at Momentum Day or at Gold Training, one or the other, but it was in person, I remember him saying, and he was like, uh, oh, about not putting all your eggs in one basket, I think, with the business, you know, SFM are staying around, they've got no intention of going anywhere, um, but you must make sure that your business portfolio, it was quite a practical question, that your business portfolio is quite diverse, and that you make sure you're opening up as many opportunities for yourself as possible, and he said, you know, we're not going anywhere. People often say to me, what is my exit strategy, and he's like, I don't have one, I, I die. <laughs> like he, he loves it that much and he just sees himself just doing this yeah. forever. He's good. He is good. Um, I, I kind of went off on a tangent then, which I would do. But um, basically what I was trying to get at, something you mentioned, Amy, is the community. As soon as I was going through that hard time, um, straight away I put the video up um, and Jill was on it like that. You know, um, and within five minutes we were on the phone talking about a whole host of different things um, and she's amazing and that is just a prime example of what you have in the community and how they can help you. Yeah, and I, I think mean, masterminds as well, being able to meet up in person, you know I've met you a few times now Jay but there's something about, especially when you're working online and it's so easy to get stuck behind your computer and it can be quite isolating, the fact that the community members have taken it upon themselves to organise local meetups, which are happening all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're really, brand seeing random ones appearing on Facebook all the time. Yeah, <laughs> in random towns. It's funny. People coming from Scotland to the south to have a <laughs> have a coffee or something. I'm like, what? It's like, so Jake, just in case people haven't picked up on the book itself, I think I put it in the description on the on the post and in the um, on the page that we've got. But just remind everybody what it's called and who it's by. And it's Rhinoceros Success by Scott Alexander, and he does have a Facebook page, and he's happy for you to add him because he keeps commenting and liking on my posts when I talk about being a rhino. <laughs> um, I love the guy. What a ledge, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Incredible, and um, yeah, you have to go and listen to it for the sake of four pounds for an audio book. Yeah, just... I've ordered it. I've got the book coming to my office, but like, you, yeah. the audio book would be cool. I I get more time to listen than I do to read. So I yeah. should have wrote to him really. He's got a commission, shouldn't I? Yeah, because <laughs> like, that's. I think that's about ten people that have got it because of me shouting about being a rhino on Facebook. <laughs> Get your Amazon link on your website. I know, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I, I just hope um, people find it as uh, good as me, uh, as helpful as me in, in what it is. I'm sure they will. I think um, it's a really good analogy, just the fact that it's a rhino. Like every, it, It's a really clear analogy. There's no sort of deep scientific thinking. I know, I, I'm enjoying the Stuart Lippman stuff, but it can get quite deep and quite heavy and quite frightening. And I actually put off doing it the first time around because it was all a bit raw after a bereavement to be answering questions like, you've got a day to live, what are you going to do? You've got, I was like, oh, I can't do with this right now. Um, but the rhino thing, it, the rhino analogy is just so in your face, very simple, very clear. Everyone knows what a rhino is. I think it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah it is. Mm. And I think that's why it's so funny. Yeah. I'll be hearing Jade go doing videos soon. I'm a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie. <laughs> he he gets you to um I've got a little script here, he says, um he says, um there is no excuse for anything. You control what you become. There is and he says that every morning when you get out of bed you say, I am a rhinoceros or I know. <laughs> <Rhinosaurus. laughs> I don't know why. I'm gonna. Like, it's it's a brain fart now. And he says there is. You have to say this every day. There is yeah. no reason why I cannot do anything I want to do. Why am I giving myself pathetic excuses? I'm the only one that holds me back. And everything you do is is um, starts with you basically. And um, one of the exercises I did with Tory Prime guys was um, you look at like 10 different reasons why you haven't achieved what you want to achieve in life and you look at a family reason, a financial reason and all this sort of stuff and then you look 
pick three insights that you've taken from it. And the biggest one I took from it was the only thing that's holding me back is me. And ever, it was nothing to do with my family. My family are holding me back because um, I live with them now and now I've decided to move. Um, they're not really holding me back. It's just all in my head. Yeah. Uh, financially, what's holding me back? Um, whether or not I'm willing to take that risk. It's me again. And everything in this is it's you that's holding you back. It's, there's only you. And this is where the mindset comes in, the blueprint that Jay's put together. Yeah. Which I know you're working on, Amy. Have you done it, Jade? Have you? Um, no, Mum's on it. I haven't watched the webinar yet. I did it at the very beginning, but not in completion. Yeah, I did it at the beginning. To be honest, I think if, if everybody in the community was 100% honest, I don't think there's many people that do it properly from the outset, and I think that's a huge thing. But... I think you just have to make your own mistakes to realise I'm going back through it now and determined to do it properly because I've been, you know, I've had half decent results already and I just think, oh my God, what could I achieve if I actually put my mind to really, really focusing on the mindset stuff as well. Um, and you can just learn everything else quite quickly if you put your mind to it, but I think the mindset and your own self-doubt is the hardest thing to master. And I, I saw a quote the other day that was so true. I've actually got it pinned to my desk next to all my chips. Um, and it says, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. And it's true. Yeah. It's so true. Um, Jay's doing the um, new 90-day blueprint, which means you don't have to go over the old one. Um, well, not the old one, the existing one. Right. Um, you can just start from scratch and do the 90-day blueprint. He did a webinar last Friday, which is on the back office. Yeah, I need to watch the recording because I only got through the first bit of it and have to go on to the other call. Yeah. yeah I'd, skip, I'd probably skip the first 45 minutes because it's basically bringing people out. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's what I heard. Out the stories. But I think tomorrow's anyway will be the one, not tomorrow's, Friday's will be the one with all the info anyway. Cool. That's wicked. Um, what time are we on? 23? Yeah. Um, so I, I had something that I found. Um, and it's not relevant to us really because we're kind of already rhinos and we're already pursuing our dreams. And um, they say that, um, where is it now? <laughs> Oh, right, okay, so it talks about um, how even if you decide to become a rhinoceros, <laughs> rhinoceros. It, it will not rhinoceros rex. <laughs> it will not guarantee you su success and happiness, but what um, it's better to be sometimes it's better to be a happy cow than a miserable rhino. <laughs> That's what I'm going for, rhino. And it talks yeah. about how. Um, Cows make excuses um, not to um, try to be successful because they believe that a select few are selected to be successful. And then he goes on to talk about, that's fine. If you want to be a cow in your life, be a cow because we need you to fertilize our, our wealthy gardens for us with your fertilizing, your shit meadow so you could carry on going on in your life and just be waiting to be slaughtered that's absolutely fine <laughs> and so he talks about all this sort of stuff and basically the point he's saying is um, if you've got a dream and you really want it you need to get in that frame of mind where you do have to become a rhino and just go after your dream it doesn't matter how big or how small if you do the same thing over and over, you're always going to get the same result, which yeah. is a quote which is bantered about all the time. I'm yeah. sure you guys have heard that quite a lot as well. It's true. Yeah. yeah. So, this is key for sure. So um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Just any any parting words from uh, any of you guys at all? I'm just ordering the rhinoceros. <laughs> Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. There's an updated edition, Jade. Make sure you get the up-to-date one. Okay. And it's the same as me last week when I was trying to say reciprocity. <laughs> yeah, 
Do you feel better? 24 hours I had to drill that into my brain. Reciprocity. See, you persisted and it worked. You got it wrong. And now, and now I can't get it wrong. There you go. Um, I'm going to... Go on then. Uh, just, it's, it's just one of those topics that... It, there's not much more we can say. Like, it's, it's key. It's, it's, a, it's a fact that you've got to persist with anything that you want to master. And more than likely, the point at which... Jay, Jay is always talking about this with the 99 percentile and the mountain. And most people give up when they're so, so close. But you just don't realize how close you are. So you've got to just constantly keep the faith that you're one step away from a massive result. Because the point that you feel at your lowest is probably just before. And I've had so many occasions now where I, that has happened. And it's only with hindsight that I can now keep going because I know that it will happen again. And at the point that I'm effing and blinding and wanting to throw my laptop out the window, I'm, that will usually be a good sign that I'm not far away from something good happening. And I think I said that to you, Jay, when you were having fallouts with Facebook. It, you've persisted so much with it that I don't think there's much Facebook could throw at you now that you wouldn't be able to find a way around. And that is going to serve you so well long term that... Other, yeah. my, my experience, touch wood, has been fairly plain sailing with Facebook, bar some stumbling blocks at the very, very beginning. And I don't know that I would have persisted with it as much as you have. There's other areas I've had to persist with, but you've certainly <laughs> come through some challenges. There's um, there's a book called The Dip, it, um, and I listened to one of Story Prime's podcasts, and it was a, a woman called Stella Grison, and she was talking about... Excuse me. She was talking about how you can be plodding along and plodding on, and then you hit a you hit a dip in your life or your business, and you're keep you're trying to get out of this big hole in this dip you're in, and you're trying and trying, and you're getting so frustrated, and you're at the point where you feel like giving up all the time, and you're in this dip, and you're so close to just getting out of that dip and getting over the edge that if you give up then, then every, everything you've done before it will be worth nothing. But if you keep persisting and keep being persistent, when you get over that hill and you get out of that dip, you're there. You, you know, you've reached the, the, I don't know what it is. The promised land. The Most promised land. <laughs> and, um, and that's what it's all about. And, it's great. It, it's great when you come out the other end. It's absolutely fucking shit when you're in it. Um, I can definitely vouch for that. <laughs> but just keep moving. If you it's so worth it, whatever whatever your goal is, whether it's you know making making more money or getting fitter or losing weight or anything, a career goal, anything, it just you've got it's so so worth it when it happens and you've got to keep pushing the pushing the goalpost and always having one because you'll get complacent yeah yeah they said if if you want to be something if you want to be something you have to act like that thing you want, want to be already yeah so if you want to be a rhino you've got 24 hours in a day to convince yourself you're, you're a rhino and start behaving like a rhino who is extremely wealthy, extremely happy, and not being a cow in the meadow waiting to be slaughtered. Beautifully put, Jay. Well done. I am a rhino. <laughs> I'm a rhino too. Um, we're all rhinos. That's why I hang around with you guys. Because we're all rhinos. <laughs> What's a pack of rhinos called, Jay? You what, sorry? What's a pack of rhinos called? I don't even know. Unstoppable. <laughs> Unstoppable, nice. Unstoppable. Well, should so, we um, wrap it up? Just, We're just on the hour now. Yeah, just to wrap up, how can we get hold of you, Jade? Um, you can find me at lesleyandjaylawler.com. I have a little contacts box on there where you can um, arrange a Skype call with me and I'm a mum you can get both of us and um, hello <laughs> yeah you get in touch come for a chat don't be scared um, 
and you can also find me on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Google, you name it, um, and just Google Leslie and Jade Lawler and they're all on there. Wicked. Well, thanks for coming on, Jade. Uh, next up, Amy, how do we get hold of you? Cool, yep, you can find me at mywifilife.com. Same as Jade, I've got a contact box there. You can arrange a Skype call, um, sign up sign up to my list, get your free boot camp if you haven't already had it. Um, if you are already receiving the videos from me, you'll have all my contact details at the bottom of your emails and just reply to an email. Um, or jump on Facebook, the links are there as well. My Wi-Fi Life is my page. Um, and Amy Taylor is obviously my name. There's quite a few of us though. So if you jump on My Wi-Fi Life, you'll see a link to my personal profile as well and you can message me through that. Um, I am on Twitter. I am on the other social media sites, but I won't lie, I don't really know how to use most of them. So Facebook or my website is the best bet. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, finally, from me, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, you will see, uh, maybe there, <laughs> you'll see my website just there, and um, you can come in, schedule covers on there. If you receive my emails already, you'll know that there are contact details just below, and uh, just get in touch with us through there, or uh, schedule a call, which is also on there as well. Wicked. And uh, finally, if you haven't already bought the book, I recommend you head over to Amazon now, get the audio book for four pounds or the actual hardback book for about nine pounds. It's well worth a read. Or I Kindle. Don't know. Got Kindle. Got it on Kindle. Got it on Kindle. There you go. So um, if any, if nothing else, you'll be calling yourself a rhino every morning when you get out of bed, <laughs> with your girlfriend or your husband or your wife or whoever it might be off, which can oh. only be. <laughs> so uh, on that note uh, we're going to wrap it up and uh, thanks for listening and I look forward to seeing you all for a <laughs> webinar again in two weeks cool, right. look out for the emails talk to you soon guys bye bye, bye.